Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for this lesson that you have enabled us to start. And we thank you that you have protected us up to this time. We ask you that as you're going to have this lesson, may you bless our teachers so that they can teach us and we understand. May you give us good network and help us to attend this lesson fully. May you give us knowledge and wisdom to understand whatever is going to be told to us. And may this lesson go on successfully. In the mighty name of Jesus, I have prayed and believed. Amen. 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 Thank you, Charity. Um, Amen. Teacher Joseph, teacher Jennifer, you're welcome. Um, last week, we were looking at uh, a few challenges uh, that the girls had encountered when they tried to do the, the quiz test. And uh, we tried to answer uh, questions that uh, uh, time would allow us to answer. And today we, we want to start on a new topic, uh, but before we start, I don't know if there is any burning question that uh, we can able to talk about before we start a new topic. Joseph, uh, you'll try to monitor. Yes, please. Yeah. So you can try to monitor and you see if there are any questions before we start. We have uh, from Charity. I don't know. OK. Sure. Charity. I wanted to ask what was the working for the question of convert 22, I mean 22 ET best 12 to best 10? Because I got it right, but I need more explanation. OK. They want wanted us to convert. Uh, I'm not looking at the questions at the moment. So they wanted us to convert um, ET. Let me go to the right one. ET best 12 to best 10. Teacher C. Yes, please. Hope Can wants to, to explain. OK, I'm trying to go to the whiteboard so that uh, it works. Okay. Okay. Is everyone seeing that? Yeah, sure. Yes. OK, uh, they've told us to convert 12 ET2. What, what's the other question? To, to what? To best what? 12? OK, so it is 2 to ET best 12 to best 10. To okay. best? So it is two two not twelve. It's two two. Yeah. Two two. Then eighty. Twelve. They want you to convert it to. To best ten. Okay. Uh huh. We had someone um, who wanted to explain to us. Yes, teacher, it was with Trevor Hope. Okay, uh, yes, Hope. Uh, the, no. e, the E stands for 11 and the T stands for 12. Yes, so we put uh, ones on top of T, T on top of E, T, T stands for 12, 12 on top of two and 12, 12, 12 on top of the first two. Joseph. Can you share the whiteboard there? I don't know if the whiteboard is visible. Yeah, it is. No. Excuse me, Kira. Can you please read? Us? Kira, but can you please repeat the explanation? Okay. okay. What are uh, before, before Kira will repeat, uh, Joseph. Yes, please. Uh, we are having a T to base 12. I don't know if that is uh, what was in the question. You do have a T and a base 12? Is okay, 10. it is 14. Yes. Okay. Yeah, 14. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. So Chirabo, go on. Uh, we put one, one, one there, zero, ones. And then mm -hmm. we put T, 12, 10 for 12s. Mm -hmm. Then we put yeah, two, then three. Uh -huh. Then? And then we get two times 12 times 12 times two 12. Times 12. Or three times to power three. Power three. Plus two times twelve into brackets. Plus two times twelve to power two into brackets. Two times twelve. Part two into brackets. Oh. 
two uh -huh. plus e times 12 to power. What is e? E is 11. So you say 11 times yes. 12, 12 to power 1 uh -huh. into brackets plus 10 times 12 to power 0. Ten times every number 12 to power zero. Okay. So that is what you are having. I guess what was confusing some people was what E stands for and what T stands for. E is 11 and T is 10. And you realize that you are working in base 12. So those numbers are less than base 12. Um, I see some hands up. Joseph, can you try to find out from here? Okay. Uh, let's hear from uh, Cynthia first. Please unmute. Teacher, could you help me repeat? I was not connected. Okay. Um, they wanted us to convert two two e t base twelve to base ten. So your friend uh, told us that uh, we need to put the the place values on each of um, the values in the number. E is standing for 11, T is standing for 10. So above 10, we have ones, then above you have tens, then above two, you have hundreds, then uh, thousands. And because we are working in base 12, we shall be getting those numbers that are stated in the number times uh, 12, then to power whichever place value we are having. So the first one is two times 12, because 12 is our base, then to power three. The next is two times 12 to power two. Then E is standing for 11. So 11 times 12 to power one. T is standing for 10. So we shall have 10 times 12 to power zero. And then you, you can simplify these numbers. So who was leading us? Can we try to simplify it? Um, the other class teachers can try to admit the students as we focus on this. Yes. Uh, the, the answer is 3,450. Uh, what, what is the answer for the first bracket? Two uh, times 12 for three. What do you get? 3,456. 3,456. 56. Uh, then the next answer. 288. 288. Then the next? 132. 132. Then? The next one is 10, because every number to pass you is one, yeah. So when you sum up these numbers, what do you get? Uh, 3,886. 886. Best 10. 10. Best 10. Excuse so, me, I also had a question. Okay. Uh, can we do one question at a time uh, so that uh, it's easier to, to make a follow up? Let's first exhaust this. Uh, if there are no questions here, yeah, maybe we can go to the next question. But I see hands up. Can we first attend to those hands? Okay. Let's hear from uh, Lukia first. I'm teacher. In my question is not about this, it's about something else. Can you wait, please? Let's first uh, exhaust this. Okay, can we have a uh, hope? I hope I don't know if you want to yes. explain. Yeah, I have a question. Uh -huh. It's on this number. Uh, okay. why do we why do we why do we put the eleven as E and the ten as T, then the twelve as A? Thirteen as B. Why do we make it like that? Why is it presented in that way? I just need a deeper understanding. That's all. Okay. That's the answer. Uh huh. Okay. If you put it as if you put it as two two, then one one as like eleven, then someone wouldn't know the difference. But someone would think it was one and a different one, and not eleven. Even for 10, if you put one and zero, someone would think that was a separate zero and a separate one. So it would confuse you. Okay, thank you, yes. our default. Yes, another question, another question eh, is that 
why is it let us say told us to give until base 13 like the, the base is base 13 why does 12 appear as a okay joseph you wanted to answer oh you yeah, have a question okay yes joseph i don't know whether we can first give a chance to any girl okay let's I... let's 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 yeah. give a chance to the girl before you come in okay can we hear from manare rokia should we Yes. Um, teacher, for me, I think if if you put E, E to represent um okay, let me begin with that that T that is representing ten. Um, if you put that ten here, it changes the meaning that is going to be two two, maybe one zero, meaning it's one zero not a ten. Okay. Uh, we have more hands up. Can we uh, have some uh, gradis, Nachi Gude? Um, okay, according to our question, she say that why don't they like, why don't they, instead of T, they put A. Now, if we look at from number 10, it is represented as T, 11 as E. Then if you go to 12 again, the first the first letter is T. So like it will it will be very confusing because ten is t and even you want to put twelve as t it will be confusing so that's why we substitute it as a and we continue a b c d like that to prevent confusion. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tamari, you have a different view, Kendo. Okay, can we have Teacher, my... I want to... Yes. I wanted to tell. I wanted to tell her. Yes. Oh God. Go on, Tendo. Tendo. I wanted to tell her that we don't we don't use one one for eleven and we don't use the number ten for ten. We use the letters because if we use one one and we use one zero to represent the numbers, we're going to be adding more placed values to the to the number that's in base twelve and the letters, I think the letters represent the numbers way easily. Okay. Joseph, you want to sum it up? Yes, but uh, we have Marjorie, maybe Leslie. No, teacher, I also had the same explanation that okay. they don't use T, okay. like T. Okay. So to harmonize that, uh, we the, the standard letters we use for 11 and, and okay, 11, we use E, the small E, and then for 10, we use a uh, small T. But when, when you find a question having, say, A, capital A, okay, being substituted for base 10, eh? or capital B for base uh, 11, then you have to, to give us your explanation or for those letters you have written, because they're not standard. Eh? So maybe for that question, if we wrote uh, two, two, and uh, two, 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 B, I don't know whether teacher Theo can, can do that. Yes. If the question was, uh, Two two B, two two. Capital B. And mm -hmm. capital A, and capital A. Mm -hmm. Best tour of. Eh? Mm -hmm. Then we would give an explanation for the letters B and A, because I know standard we would say where B represents our base eleven, and A represents base ten. Okay. In that same question, but uh, in case you use a small e and t, they are standard. I don't, and you don't need to explain what e and t stands for. So those are the two differences. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, though we, we still have some some hands up. I don't know, maybe to clear, simplify but... it. To simplify it, uh, the moment we reach nine. Uh, yeah, yeah, we... standard. Yes. Are E and T standard? E and T yes. are somehow standard because um, they are, they are starting with the first letters of of uh, the numbers. 
Yeah, but uh, when we go on uh, from 12 upwards, if they use any data, they'll tell you what that data is standing for. Though in most cases, we use um, capital letters, uh, alphabetical letters starting from A onwards. Eh? But in yes. most cases, in most cases, they are going to be stopping at, at, at 11, you know, but in case uh, they have set their number beyond 11, they'll use a data which they are going to define in that question. So if they say B is best 10, does that mean B is 10? Um, they might not tell you that B is 10. Uh, they'll use B when it's above 11. If it's a 10, then they, they will still use a small T and a small E for 11. B is 15, B is 16, or the say B is yeah. best 15. They can tell you that B is standing for 13, or B is standing for 14, depending on which base you're working in. Eh? But of course, yeah. that B has to be less than the base you're working in. That is one thing you have okay. to note. They say B is best 13. Does that mean B is 13, or oh, it's less than 13? No, teacher Joseph gave this as just an example. OK? OK. Yeah. Okay, I understand. Yeah, Joseph, maybe, <laughs> I think what's confusing our default is you using capital B and capital A, and uh, the base you're working in is <laughs> is uh, smaller than those letters, you would assume. Eh? Okay. Get it? Maybe what they need to note eh? yeah. uh, for a person, because in math, they, they, they use many, many ways. Eh? So mm. for a person right, using uh, writing bases using capital letters, you will note that uh, in the order of alphabetical letters, eh? your A will be for base 10, then it B 11, and so on. Eh? For a person writing that sense. Eh? But remember, you can't have, uh, say, if, if C is representing base 12, you can't have it in, in base 12. Okay? Yes. Hope, yes. Hope I'm they were always, yes. They were always specify. Yes. No, that's I yeah. But in most cases, in most cases, they use E and T for 11 and 10, eh? in most cases. Okay, uh, Joseph, can we attend to those other questions? I see someone's up. Okay, let's hear from Rina, maybe. Rina, please unmute. Yeah, if we are multiplying in verse 12 and one of the answers is 11. How do you write it? You, you just write E, small t. OK. Uh, teacher Jennifer, I don't know if you're on. Wanted to say something? She's, she's off. I don't know whether she's back. She's on and, and then off. I... And... Teacher Mata is, is here as well. Maybe you, you add her as a host. Okay. She has the initials, teacher, teacher Mata. I don't know whether she's still on. Yeah, yeah, you can see her. Um, okay. Is uh, teacher Jennifer on? I don't know whether she's back. Let me okay. check. I think she's on and off. OK, can we hear from the girls? OK. Someone had asked uh, what, what we, we write as uh, 11 after multiplying. So the explanation will be uh, for bases above uh, base 10. Eh? Yes, because we need to identify whether that 1, 1 is 11 or 1, 1 is, is a separate number. So if 1, 1 is simply uh, representing 11, then you, you substitute it for small e. As well, if you if you got ten, if you want to identify uh, ten from one zero, you use t, and that is small t. So that is what okay. you should know. There. Thank you, Joseph. Um, can the girls attend to the poll as we continue uh, to attend to their questions? Okay, let's hear from Nisha first. Nashifa, first. Uh, excuse me, Sha? Yes. 
I wanted to ask like there was there was some question like having the same same thing like the one we have just answered. It was saying convert two three z base four to base five. But I wanted to ask like what does the z stand for? I'm confused about the z. Two three. Uh, was it among it the, the two three z? Two three z. Huh? Best four to best five. Charles, can we attend to the poll? It's running, and some people are yet to to, to tell us which stream there. Can you attend to the poll as we? Uh, uh teacher see uh, i can't you what is what is what is our question, question? Uh, i don't know what is our question maybe it was a typing uh, she's I, maybe she can repeat she's saying uh, yes can you repeat i wanted i wanted to ask like there was a question i don't know if i'm the one who saw like the number poorly but uh -huh. it was saying convert to three z base four to base five Two three Z. Two three Z. No. That, yes. No, there, I think that was a typing error, which was rectified. It was a typing error. Oh. Okay. Yeah. It was rectified. I think I remember that error. Okay. Um, Joseph, can we move on? Okay. Uh, we have. Uh, let's hear from it's Shaggy. Excuse me, Excuse me, teacher. What was the correction? What like was what that? Was the, what was the correction of that number? Okay, let me check it out. And in the meantime, uh, Joseph, you can be attending to other questions as I check the question. Uh, eh? Teacher. Yes, please. Um, do you mind if if you you talk about Shortly, the, the, the sequence that has us another sequence, if you're going, you're going to get the nth formula, the nth term. Come again, I, I didn't get you away. Petra, do you mind if you talk about a little, if you talk about um, a sequence that has another sequence, if you want to find the nth term, They can you hear me? A sequence which yes. has a what? A sequence. Uh -huh. a, a sequence. Like if you're adding these numbers and say maybe plus two plus two, that sequence down. And how do you find the nth formula if the number given has another sequence and the value to get the nth term? Do you have any any sample example that we can use? Yes, let me check here. Okay, as you're checking, we can hear from uh, Charity. So I wanted to ask when you talked about giving like 22, then capital B and capital A, base 12, mm. like mm. does that B and O stand for a specific number or for a certain base? Like for example, is it B standing for 11 or B standing for base 11? Like if, if that's it. Okay, thank you. Now, uh, it's here. Okay, May, maybe before, let me, let me answer the other one because it is very fast. Uh, in my explanation, I said, uh, because on setting that question, I, I couldn't write the one on the screen now. I couldn't write uh, 2, 2, then 11, 10 in the figures because I wanted to mean that uh, 11 is 11 as under base, base store of, eh? and then T is 10 as per under store of, base store of. Eh? So if you just write uh, uh, 2, 2, 11, yet you're, you're meaning, uh, okay, if you write 2, 2, 1, 1, yet you're meaning 11, then someone could just transfer that as 
one and one, okay? So I, I said that is one way of writing bases. And I said uh, E and T are standard because they are known for E representing 11 as a value and a base to row or bases above base 11. And then T representing 10 for numbers uh, above above base 10. But some other way, one can write 2, 2. Instead of writing E, one writes capital B. OK? And then uh, instead of writing T, one writes capital A. And I said in that case, that person wants to mean that uh, uh, the, the order of uh, alphabetical letters are representing bases in that order, starting from base 10, okay? Whereby uh, A, capital A now will be representing a number 10, okay? And then B will be representing a number 11, C, 12, and so on. Eh? So when you want to write such, such numbers, under base, say 11 and above, you can either write A, B, and so on, and then tell us what those letters are representing because they're not standard, okay? You can say that uh, A is representing 10, B is representing 11, and so on. Hope I'm clear now, I don't know. Thank you, Joseph. Um, I don't know the person who was asking about the conversion number. If it was one of these, someone who talked about a Z. If it was one of those. Yeah, uh, we corrected. We corrected these numbers. Okay. okay I've seen the correction. Thank you. Teacher. Okay. Teacher can, can, can we move on, please? Yes. Excuse me. Teacher so can they give you the question like convert twenty? B, A, base 12, where B stands for 11 and A stands for 10. Is that the way they set the question? Yes, that's how they can set it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome, please. Teacher Jose. Thank you, teacher. Yes. The number is 2828. Uh, there is a comma. Two eight a comma. Uh huh. No, no, no not like that. Okay, let me, let me let me read it again. It's two, two eight comma uh -huh. eight okay. eighteen comma two comma eight comma uh huh. Eighteen, eighteen. Then thirty two. Fifty. Sorry? 50. <coughs> uh -huh. That's all? Yes. And then they tell you to find the nth term. I want you to find the nth term. Yes. Joseph, does it uh, make sense to you? OK. I think you, you, you first have to, to think through because uh, according to their level, uh, you can't have such a sequence where the difference is, is different. Say the subtraction of, of eight and two is different. Unless when they give you a crew. You remember the, the last question we did uh, where you had uh, counting numbers and then squared. If, if you can go back to, uh, Yes. Which exercise was that? Page 80, 84. Okay. Yeah. Page 84, that question three. They gave I think you. They, yeah, I think they will not set for them a question of this kind and they ask them to get yes. the nth term. Eh? If, if yes. there is no common difference, they can't, unless if they have given me a hint, as teacher Joseph is saying. Eh? Yes. In this case here, they will ask you to look for the next terms eh, or the missing terms, I guess. It was in the NCD book. 
though. And and they didn't give you a hint. No. No. Okay. Shag. You can even check. Yeah. Yes. They, 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 they actually did. did. They gave the hint. It was in the first question. Oh, yeah. That on, on number three, exactly. Say the formula for the nth term is sequence of the sequence equals n squared. So one yeah. four nine. That is like the clue shed meaning. Yes. So you're, you're talking about um, question teacher, three. It's like there is a regular pattern because like between six and 10, you add four, between 10 and 14, you add four, then between 14 and 18, you add four. So I think you keep on adding four to these numbers down, then you add what you've got to, to the numbers in the sequence and you get the term. So I think it had... It had, I didn't get you well. Okay. Okay, Tisha, this, this sequence down where there is six, 10, 14, then the other next one should be 18. So like there is a difference of four between six and 10, you, there is a difference of four. Between 10 and 14, there is a difference of four. Then between 14 and 18, there is a difference of four. So like you add two plus six to get eight, then you add four to six to get the next term here. Then that is what you add to eight to get 18, which is 10. Then you add four to 10 to get 14. Then you add 14 to 18, which is 32. So you go on like that. And I think it has regular pattern, which is that, yeah. But okay, charity. I, I just, Joseph, okay, go on. Yes. Go on. Charity, remember, they, they want you to find the formula for the any state term, okay? And the way you have explained, I, I think you can hardly get the formula in that way. But when you, when you use- the formula or for the next number in the sequence. They ask for the formula for the any state term. If you look at that question, question three on page 84. But it is easier to use the hint which was given because when you use the hint of uh, squaring counting numbers, you would see that that sequence, which is part C, was obtained by multiplying a two by N squared. When you multiply two times N squared, you get that sequence because you know that N squared is one, is one, four, nine, 16, 25, okay? So when you multiply two by each term of that sequence, you'll be getting that sequence for part C. So you don't need to complicate things at your level. Okay? Just use the hint that is given and find of obtaining the family there. Does it make sense now? Yes, sure. I yeah. thought she was asking for the next number. Yeah, in that question, you were given a hint. So it was uh, basically, we were supposed to use that hint to work out the number. Um, yes. So teacher, the N is the number, the numbers in the sequence. Yeah, the natural numbers. I think they gave you uh, N squared uh, the values for n squared somewhere up in the question. Yes, that's what they give. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, natural numbers. As oh. you add one, two, three, like that. So you keep squaring them, eh? and you multiply by two. Okay. Yes, teacher. Oh, okay. Can can we move on? Uh, Tendo, Tamari, do you have a question? Not teacher. It has been answered. Okay. Can we move on? Uh, any other question? We seem to have uh, spent a lot of time on this, and yet uh, we are supposed to start a new topic. Any other questions? I, I don't see any. Maybe we can introduce the other topic. I don't know if teacher Jennifer is on. She, she had joined. Maybe you look out for her. I don't know. Okay, seems she has a challenge with the network. Um, so girls, uh, I don't know if my screen is clear. 
Yes. As if Nakalema's hand is up. Can we hear from her if she has a question? Okay. Uh, if you're not having any question, um, I guess we can. I also out. wanted to ask. Yes. Can number about. Bearing. Uh, I don't think I've got your question. Joseph, I don't know if you've got our question. My network is there. Still... No, I have not. Okay, she can was... you ask the question again, please? Her question was she wants to know a number about bearing. So, what number? What question? I have a question. Uh huh. Can you ask? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Please go Excuse on. Excuse me, Cha. Ask. Can you I wanted ask? to ask a number about bearing. Yes. What number is it? No, she has a question about bearing. I think her internet is unstable. Yeah, that's. Can can you ask the question, please? Uh, she's off. May, maybe when she comes back, she will use the chat. I think her network is is poor. She can use the chat. Then we shall look at it. How about if she's just giving you the token that she just wanted to bring out a question on that bank and you explain it to her? Okay, we shall wait for the stands, but Joseph? She's she's apparently off. Maybe when she comes back, we shall. Huh? But uh, teacher Jennifer is, is here as well. Um Maybe you can, you can proceed for now when uh, when she comes back, uh, we shall attend to her, okay. 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 Um, I had uh, shared um, the screen for topic nine, which is uh, data correction and presentation and that is going to be our next topic. Uh, someone in the chat is asking about uh, division of bases. I thought last time we talked about division of bases and I remember we said, uh, when you are given bases to divide, the best thing to do is to convert them to base 10, which is the standard base, and then you divide. Then the answer you get you convert it back to the base uh, they're they are asking you to express your answer in. So it's easier that way. Otherwise, uh, you cannot divide bases straight away in their respective bases apart from base 10. It's, it's a bit tedious. So Rakicha, Gruri, yes? Uh, maybe last week, sorry about that. Eh? I, I had not seen my chat. Uh, so, some, someone is asking about, uh, I know that. Okay, let me let me run to that question very fast here. She's asking. Uh, there's a question of uh, walking a certain distance. Okay, the one of uh, a man walks at uh, five five whole numbers, so out of five kilometers per hour. And they are asking mm. how far how far does he walk in eighty in 80 minutes. Okay. So I mean, we had that. I think get the very first side, you don't leave far behind. I don't know whether it was uh, in one of the questions. Yes. Or oh, it's a different question. It was uh, one of the questions. Okay, it's yeah. Okay, maybe very fast. Eh? There mm. they are, they are two ways through which you can do that question. Eh? Mm. One, you, you can use 
a conversion, okay? Because they are saying that uh, that man walks two, sorry, five or numbers, two out of five per hour. Meaning, meaning that uh, he covers that distance in an hour, but an hour is 60 minutes, okay? So you can use that conversion of five or numbers so out of five kilometers are equivalent to one hour or 60 minutes, okay? And then you ask yourself, how about 80 minutes, okay? When you convert that easily, you'll find that uh, your, your answer is, is a D, which is seven or numbers, one out of five. Okay? Okay. Um, the, the other way, one can use the formula of distance equals speed times time. Distance equals speed times time. Maybe, um, I don't know if they have done that. I think it's easier to use um, that other approach. Um, the, the first. So yeah. you, you were given uh, that information that a man walks five and two out of five kilometers per hour. It is easier to, if you can convert, um, maybe let me put it this way. So it takes that man um, one hour to move that distance. Eh? Okay. If you convert five and uh, two out of five uh, from mixed fraction to improper, you are going to get uh, 27 out of five kilometers uh, in one hour. Which are 60 minutes. Or you can say this is equivalent to 60 minutes. Okay. Mm. So, uh, if this man is moving 27 out of 5 kilometers in 60 minutes, okay, how many kilometers will he move in 80 minutes? So, you can easily find what that man moves in one minute. And how do you do that? Maybe I should hear from them. Um, Nakarema, Nashifa. Nakarima. Joseph. Yes, please. Was that question from Nakarima? I see her uh, hand up and she's. I had a bad internet connection. So, excuse me, Chair. I can rearrange it like this and I start. Yes. Excuse me, Chair. Yes, Nakarima. Yes. I wanted to ask a question about bearing. Like before, when I was asking, I had a bad internet connection. Ja, can okay. you hear can, me? Can we, yes, can we exhaust this and we move on to that? Okay. Joseph. Yes, please. This is the question they asked you in the chat? Yeah, yes. Okay. So um, I was asking the girls, what would be the best of doing it? If you're having 60 minutes, uh, which is equivalent to one hour, uh, representing 27 out of five kilometers, what will 80 minutes represent? Okay, teacher, oh. I think I have the answer. Uh -huh. Okay, this is how I did it, but I'm not sure if it's the right method. Okay. So that so twenty seven out of five is sixty minutes, but they say eighty minutes. So first I subtracted eighty minus sixty, which gave me twenty minutes. So I put twenty out of sixty, which gave me a third. Then I multiply twenty seven out of five by a third, which gave me a number which I don't remember. Then I added that number to five, sorry, I added that number to 27 out of five kilometers. Then I got the final answer. Okay, you tried to do it in mechanically. 
uh, who, can, who can tell us uh, how to do it in our systematic way? Okay. Next yes, yep, from charity. Yes. Okay. Charity. Yes. So for me, I first found like how many kilometers will be covered in one minute. That was by dividing 27 out of five by, by 60. So in other words, in one minute, um, we are going to have 27 divided by 60. That's what you're telling us, Charity? Yes. Uh -huh. Then you get the, you can first work out that. Which can be? If you introduce a multiplication five, sign, you we'll get that. Eh? Yes. Which gives us? Did you work then it you out? divide by three, 27 by three is nine. Then mm -hmm. 60 by three is 20. Mm -hmm. So for me, I first left it as, I multiplied five times 20 and I got 100 and I left it as nine out of 100. Then after, to, then I said 80 minutes to find that distance walked in 80 minutes, it will be the 90 out of 100 kilometers times 80. Okay. So if you know what one minute is representing, then it's easier to find uh, what 80 minutes are going to represent. So if one minute is uh, represented by nine out of 100, okay? So 80 minutes are going to be represented by nine out of 100 times 80, okay? It's going to be um, 80 times what each minute is representing, eh? okay? Then and you divide, what? you cancel a zero with a zero, uh, the z uh -huh. one zero and 80, then one zero and 100, then eight divided by two is four, then 10 divided by two is five. Then I multiplied four times nine, I got 36. So I wrote 36 out of five. Then I divided 36 by five and I got seven remainder one, which is the same as seven and a fifth. Okay. Does that help? But I got Someone who asked. Yes, thank you, Charity. Teacher. Uh, Eunice. I worked it out differently. Uh huh. Uh, for me, I use the formula of distance equals speed times time. So okay, use. that's the alternative. That's okay. And I think teacher Joseph had uh, talked about that. Okay. Okay. Um, so maybe you can tell us what you did as an alternative to some people. Uh, what I did, I first changed 80, meter, 80 minutes into hours. Mm -hmm. So you, uh, that means your time which is T? Uh, in hours, it is one, and a th one hour and, and one and one out of 30. One, one so of when you divide by 60, you'll get one? One and one out, yeah, one out of 30. One, one out of 30. One and one out of 30. Yes. Like this? Yes. And mm. then since I know that distance equals speed times time, I got um, five, which gives me 27 out of five times uh, one, one yeah. out of 30, giving me 31 out of 30. Um, let me see. Does this one give us that? This is eight out of six. Is that which one is out that? of 30? Or one out of three? One out of 30 one or one out of, one out of three, I think. What did you get? Oh. Actually, even then, it, I don't think it can. When you it's get eight divided three. by six, yes? It's one out of three. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. It's not... One out of three. When you simplify it, eh? okay. So this is your time in hours. Uh -huh. Then what was that distance? Uh, the distance was 27 out of five. The distance was? 27 out of, oh no, the distance is called speed times time, giving me the speed as 27 out of five times the time, which is four out of three. Distance is speed times time, eh? Yeah. Uh-huh. And what was your speed? 
Uh, 27 out of three. 27 out of five. 27 out of five. Let's go back and check. 27 out of five is the distance moved in one hour. Okay, so that's the a speed, which is uh, kilometers per hour. Yes, is that what you did? Because it's easier to just say 27 out of five, but assuming there are no two digits per hour. So you need to let your friends know how you arrive at that speed in the first case. Okay, teacher, from what I did, I just got the five. Hmm. Five, uh, five, two out of five, then I changed it. Five times five equals 25 plus two giving me 27 out of five. Okay, we shall assume that the speed is constant. So we can use the initial information given to work out the speed. Yeah. Okay, it was uh, 27 out of five divided by one. Okay, which is 27, which gives you 27 out of five. Now these are, these are kilometers per hour. Okay. Yes. And that is going to be constant. So, you are going to pick that speed, okay? This speed, and it is what you come and put here because it's it's a constant value. It doesn't. Um, so what what is the time here? Time is um, four out of three. Okay, this one here you can say four out of three. But I think that is supposed to be two over three, not one, isn't it? Well. Because six divided by eight. You oh, get yeah, two. It is by two, you get three. By two, you get four. So it's, uh, I think it's out of three. Okay, um, Eunice, then what do you get? What did you get here? Um, I got, when I, okay, when I get the three divided by the 27, I get nine. Ah. Then nine times four. Four is 36 out of five. Which Giving takes us to the same answer. Yeah. Seven and one out of five. Okay. Um, this, this one, you can use it if you understand how to use this formula. Okay. So it's, it can be an alternative to uh, the first formula. Okay. Because the, the magic is in knowing how to find the speed. There is a possibility that they can give you this time when it's not in hours. So that means you need to substitute whichever hour they have, I mean, whichever time they have given you. Assuming they said the man moved five, uh, five, uh, five kilometers, five and two out of five kilometers in maybe 40 minutes, not an hour, because you found it easy to work to use that distance because it was one hour, but assuming that not given you uh, per hour, assuming maybe they said he moved that distance in two hours. Okay, so you need to know how to work out this time here. All, not all times they are going to be giving you tears one hour. Okay. I don't know if it makes sense. Eh? Yes, it does. Okay, so can can we? I see we have six minutes. I guess we we'll have to. I have a question. Okay. Yes. What's your question? Hey, teacher, I'm really confused. Why hmm. here on the time? Why don't we put sixty instead of? Why don't? 50? Why don't we put sixty? It's because our distance is in kilometers. Eh? So you cannot say kilometers per minute. Eh? It doesn't make sense. If, you, if you've done standard units in S1, um, you, you know what that means. So it's kilometers per hour, or you can say meters per, per second. So it's always good to convert to, to these units which, uh, which move hand in hand. Eh? Excuse me, teacher. Yes. So here, yeah, when you wanted to change the Okay, when you divided 27 out of five divided by one, you, are, you wanted to change it into hour, hour, I mean kilometers per hour. Uh, when I say 27 out of five divided by one, why did mm -hmm. I change to, it's because they gave us this time in kilometers, okay? Yeah. Yes. And they gave me that time in hours. So the units, 
the S into of speed on or the end surrogate is going to be kilometer because this upper part is in kilometer and the lower part is in hours. Eh? So oh, it's okay. kilometer per hour. Hour. Okay, thank you, teacher. Joseph. Yes, please. Uh -huh. Can can we get more people? Maybe if there hope. are more questions. Hope. So I had a question, but it wasn't on this, what we're covering, it was on like on the previous activity of integration. Like this, on this part where they told us to do the pie chart, when I added all the answers, I got it, it was giving me 358, 59 actually. Maybe over around the door. Mm -hmm. that, that can be the problem. Yeah, but I'm still trying to figure out where the problem is, but I don't know where it is. Yeah. Did, did you get did you get all your angles as exact small places? But the rest was did you get places. something like uh, okay? I'm just giving an example. Did you get something like 88 point maybe three? Joseph? Joseph? Okay. Um, I don't know if um, loud enough. I, I seem not to hear any discussions going on. Teacher, he has left. Oh. I think he got a network challenge. Okay, uh, girls, um, I thought we were going to introduce uh, statistics today, but uh, it seems you had more questions. And um, But I'm glad uh, we are trying to understand what we didn't understand that time, than just going through without uh, first attending to your questions. So uh, what I want to tell you is to, uh, you go and, and start on this topic nine, uh, so that on Friday when we meet, um, it's easy for us to, to sail through because it is a short topic and it's uh, something that you've done before because you've done statistics in primary. I think in geography, the other time, um, Mr. Nashmo was teaching you statistics when I was here. So some of these terms are not new to you. Um, you can do some uh, research on them so that when we meet, um, it's easier for us to, to go through it quickly. So topic nine is going to be our next discussion um, on Friday. I want you to use your learner's guides well so that uh, it's easier for you to understand that topic. Okay. okay? Otherwise, Mr. it's one minute. Yes, Joseph. I, I actually went off, but uh, I don't know whether you, you had talked about uh, uh, that new topic you want to introduce? Yes, that's that's what I've been telling the girls, uh, that you are going okay. to start this topic on Friday. And mm. yeah, whichever maybe, work. Even whichever, yes, whichever maybe, work. Uh, yes, Joseph. Maybe before the, the girls come in, eh? mm. uh, we, we need to give them a better intro to this. So as their homework, before we come to that, as they read through, I request them to, I don't know how they, they do this, but uh, they would have measured uh, maybe the, the length of, uh, of their books or anything, okay, that, that are varying. Maybe they measure the height of uh, a cup, a glass, uh, the the width of uh, of anything, maybe they they are cupboard something, eh? mm. so yeah, they they generate some data that we can begin with on Friday. Mm. And uh, if one has has a tape, measuring tape, okay, you, you can try to measure the uh, the uh, circumference of 
of the trees you have in your compound that can as well can work as well sorry that can work as well uh, such that they they collect some data okay mm. uh, we can you can build knowledge from that point thank you okay thank you teacher joseph um in brief what uh, the teacher is telling us to be is to try and uh, do some data correction I saw them bring this in geography. <laughs> they could be having some good knowledge, actually. Mm. That's okay, a good thing. A, yeah. Um, I don't know if the girls have any questions because we want to end the session. Teacher, I had a question about the pie chart because I, I worked it out, but I got answers at all. I might not know. I want to add all what the answers I got. I got 59. <laughs> You got fifty. Eunice, you had the drawing. You got one hundred and fifty-nine. No, three hundred and fifty-nine. Three hundred and fifty-nine. That means you rounded off somewhere. Because the answers I actually got were fifty-one. That's not much. Oh. Seventy-one. 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 59 degrees. These ones you rounded them off. 46 degrees. 77 degrees. And the last one was 126 degrees. Now, you need, uh, this, these are rounded values. Eh? So when you round off these values, when you round off these values, you make what you call recurring errors. Eh? So there is an error that she was made as you kept on rounding off to zero decimal. Eh? So it would be it would be good um, if maybe you wrote to one decimal and received to add up. I know it might not be exact as long as they are decimals. Okay. Teacher, but, the uh, more you round off, the more accurate it becomes. Now our default, there is a possibility of you rounding off and then you go beyond 360 or you get a total which is less. You get it? So it depends on what values you are rounding off. I'm sure this one could have maybe been 51.3. Maybe this one could have been maybe 58, like 0.7, something of that kind. Or this one could be 46.4, like okay? Or maybe this is um, 76.9. You know, so as 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 you round off, um, there are errors which are usually Actually, made, yeah? that one hundred and twenty six was not recurring; it was quite indirect. It was exact. Yeah. What What did you divide to get fifty one? Uh, I got twenty times three hundred and sixty degrees divided by one hundred and forty, which was the twenty times three hundred and forty. Yes, times 360 degrees. And what answer did you get? I got... Um, was it exact? No, it wasn't exact. It was actually 51 and some remainder. Like that. That's exactly why I'm saying that as you round off, we make errors. That's why you cannot add the values and you come up with 360. Okay. okay. So what do I do to change? make sure it comes out 160? No, you can't force it. That's it's common when you are doing numbers that don't have exact angles. Eh? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes, um, the best would be to try and you uh, write your answers to one decimal and you see uh, if they will come close to 360. Okay. You try that and you see if it will work out. Eh? Okay, teacher. Thank you. You're welcome. Eh? Okay. I guess that's it for now. We will see you on Friday. Um, enjoy your afternoon. Thank you, teacher, for the lesson. Bye.